There are nine books that I need to read across August. Could be these. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through my pile of possibilities for August. The reason I'm calling it a pile of possibilities is that I am not entirely sure what the nine prompts for Pick Pongathon that my team has gotten are going to be. All I know is that I need to read nine books to fulfill every single prompt that myself and the other two hosts, Nicole from Dusty Book Sniffers and Margaret from The Word Nerd, have gotten in our respective games of Pick Pong. We're doing this as part of Pick Pongathon, which is run by Crystal from Bomb Book Reviews, and I am also going to be taking part in Battlethon, which is run by Mel from Mel Lenore Reads. And hopefully, all of the books that I have got to show you are going to be five stars so that I can get as many points as possible for House of Wings. I only know what I'm going to be reading for the prompts that I have got set up. So why don't you try and guess as we go along in these nine books, do they fit for the prompts that I have already picked out? Or are they just books that I think I'm going to be able to read? Starting it off with one that I think I should have read already, and that is Hits Different by Lizzie Huxley Jones and Tasha Guri. This is an own voices disability rep book in that Cassie, who is the main character in this book, is deaf and wears a cochlear implant and has been brought over to Ibiza to be a dancer for a huge singer who was going on tour for the summer. All of the dancers on this tour have basically performed a mutiny. They want nothing to do with the tour and they have headed off to follow a completely different singer on tour. Cassie is a little bit worried because she's going to be leaving her entire life behind her at home. She's leaving her family. She's leaving all of her friends, except for one who has come with her on the journey. And she's also leaving behind her boyfriend, Max. She and Max are in a pretty precarious position as she is leaving. She's not particularly feeling super hot about this relationship, but hopefully giving themselves a little bit of distance will make things go a little bit easier. I read Make You Mine This Christmas last year at Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones and I absolutely loved it. So when I saw that they had another book coming out and that they were going to be co-authoring it with Tasha Guri, who has appeared on Love Island, I knew that this was the book for me. Next up is The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. This is the third book in the Thursday Murder Club series and I've been saying for ages that I need to keep going with this series. It's one that my dad has read, it's one that my brother has read. I think they have actually both already read the fourth book in this series. So I am lagging super behind when it comes to those two. This is following the four residents that we know from Cooper's Chase, a retirement home in Kent in the southeast of England. So you're following Ron, Ibrahim, Elizabeth and Joyce. They are kind of not the octogenarians that you think that they might be. Elizabeth has a pretty shady past that gets exposed as we go through the books, but I also love seeing the lives that they lead around Cooper's Chase and all of the things that they get up to. I'm not entirely sure what this one is going to be about. I like to go into the Thursday Murder Club series completely blind, but I do know there's gonna be a murder involved in it. I just don't know how it's gonna tie in. Next up is one that I've promised Margaret I'm gonna read for ages and that is The Duke and I by Delia Quinn. This is the first book in the Bridgerton series and I admittedly have already read some of this book. I've read about 60 or so percent of it until I got to that scene. If you know what this book is about, if you know what the show is about, you know what scene I'm talking about. Now that I know that that scene exists and now that I know to expect it coming, hopefully I can stomach it a little bit easier and I can make the reading experience a little bit gentler on myself. This is a book that I got from a friend of mine and I actually have the entire eight book series sitting on my couch waiting for me to start. I just need something that's going to kick me up and get me starting it. So let's see if this is the time. I'd also love to get to Mix Signals by BK Barrison across August. This is the third book in the Ingle Y series and I truly love escaping to this little small town in America. I absolutely loved Love Light Farms. I think it's the perfect Christmas book. So I'm hoping that Mix Signals is going to bring me into a little bit of an autumn routine. This book is following Layla, who is the town baker and who is completely unlucky in love. Every relationship that she has had has ended in disaster. All of the dates that she's had, she's actually been ghost while on dinner at one of them. Enter Caleb. He is here to save her from her dating disasters because he has got a proposition for her. He's going to take her out and he's going to show her a good time just for one month. He also has a little bit of a benefit to this in that she is going to rate his dating game and she's going to give him some tips and tell him what he's doing wrong. But while they are basically pygmalioning each other, 
sparks really start to fly between them and the chemistry that they have got starts to really up a notch. I've absolutely loved this series and I really love BK Barrison's writing style. It's also not the latest book in this series. The fourth one just came out at the end of June, start of July. So I really need to get this series finished and this is the next way I'm going to do it. I would also really love to read Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. I just finished every summer after in July and I had a pretty good time with it so I'm pretty hopeful that this one is going to take my boxes too. This is about Fern and Will who spent a whirlwind 24 hours together when they were younger and sparks really started to fly between the two of them but the timing was just a little bit off. So they made a pact with one another. One year from now in this exact spot they're going to come back together and give it another try. One year later Fern turns up waiting for Will who never shows up. Ten years later, Fern has returned to her hometown from Toronto where she had been living the high life for such a long time. It's just that now that she needs a little bit of a slower direction, she needs to take things a little bit easier. Will eventually turns up. He might be about ten years late, but he's ready to start building some bridges. He's ready to start mending the cracks between him and Fern. And she is definitely the only person that can help him. I've also got my sights set on A Novel Love Story by Ashley Poston and I have a feeling this could be a pretty strong contender for five star reads. This one is following Eileen who is down on her luck, she isn't doing super well in life and she has been going on a road trip back home from where she's been living because she also needs to reset her life a bit. Her car breaks down while she's on the way and she finds out that she is now in the town of Aloraton. This sets off a huge train reaction in her head because this is the setting of her favourite book series. She's walking around and she's noticing the restaurants that are in the town and all of the businesses that are written about in some of her favourite stories. What she's not expecting is that one of the town's inhabitants, somebody that she has never met on any of the pages before, absolutely takes umbrage at her coming to the town in the first place. I love Ashley Poston's books because they always have a little touch of magical realism to it and they also hit you straight into the heart. I have not read an Ashley Poston book that hasn't made me cry yet and I don't think that this one is going to break the chain either. This is also the August book pick for the B&K book club which is run by Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and Kelsey from Reads with Kelsey and I am so excited to get discussing this with everyone on the Discord. I have also got my sights set on All the Fields by Olivia Dade. This one came as a gift from my friend Roisin from back home for my birthday two years ago. It is on my shelf with so long and I've tried to read it a couple of times but I think I've just not been in the headspace or I've been concentrating on too many other things so I think now is genuinely the time that I'm going to have to get it done. This is also a favourite of Brie from Four Paws in a Book. I know that she absolutely loves Olivia Dade's writing and I love Olivia Dade as well because she has so much positive plus size representation in her books. Something that I feel is missing in quite a lot of romances so this is definitely one that I'm going to try. Something that does put me off a little bit though is that it is set on the set of a fantasy TV show and I am not a huge fantasy TV girly. I don't really enjoy things like House of Dragons or Game of Thrones. It's not the kind of TV that I would usually go for but hopefully that's not going to appear too much in the book and I can just concentrate on the romance here. One book that I really wanted to get to for the Amazing Readathon, but I never got the chance to do so, is Us Against You by Frederick Backman. This is the second book in the Beartown trilogy. This was on my host favourites, not just this year, but last year for the Amazing Readathon. So I feel like I actually should get this series finished out. It is set in Beartown, a fictional town in northern Sweden, and they are hockey obsessed. At the end of Beartown there was a whole lot of turmoil about the hockey team and things are about to get even more disastrous because the team is about to be disbanded. Everyone is looking to go to Head which is the next over town and they're going to set up a new hockey team there but there are a few people left over in Beartown who are going to set up their own hockey establishment and the two teams are going to go head to head against one another. By the end of the game one of the residents in Beartown is going to be dead and there is going to be huge repercussions from that across the whole town. I am really intrigued to see what this book is going to be like. I'm also genuinely intrigued to see if it's just the first book that's really going to work for me or if I am completely in love with the entire series. The final book that's on my sites for August is The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. This is about Anna and West who got married when they were in college purely to get the family discount for public housing. They decided that when they were graduated they would sign the divorce papers and life would just go on as always. 
Except that the divorce never went through. Five years later, Anna is pretty much penniless working as an artist and West is about to come into his family's fortune, but there is one catch. West needs to prove to his family that he is happily married, that he is a family man and that he has settled down so that he can get his hands on the money. What better way to do so than to call up his actual wife and to get her to convince his family that they are a happily married couple when she's been convinced that they have been separated and living separately for the whole time. I absolutely love Christina Lauren's books. I've never met one that I didn't love, so I'm hoping that's gonna be the exact same vibe that I've got here. Those are all of the nine books that I am hopefully going to get to as we get through August. Of those nine books, what three do you think came from my own prompts? And what prompts do you think that they were? If you'd love to leave me a comment, but you can't think of anything you'd like to say, then just leave me the ping pong bats emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.